Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the president of the Greater Chattanooga Area Sports Hall of Fame, Coach Catherine Neely. Thank you very much. I feel like the good Lord led me to here tonight. I've been thinking that I might not be able to come tonight, but I've uh, been blessed that I am able to come. And I'd like to welcome each one of you to our great banquet that we have every year. We seem to get greater and bigger every year. And that is just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Uh, the Ch Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame began in the 60s. And it began by honoring football player, I mean, ba baseball players, the best baseball players in Chattanooga. Then it grew and grew and grew until it honors every sport in Chattanooga with the leaders and the great athletes of, the, of those categories. I really want to under, that you to understand that this is, a, this is founded on integrity and leadership. We have a pretty strong, uh, pretty strong rules of, of getting into our, in our club and uh, integrity and leadership are two of those things, plus what you can do as, a, as an athlete or a leader. I'd like to have all of our uh, former inductees and award winners stand, and let's see how many have made it tonight. Former inductees and award winners. Thank you. I appreciate you coming back and um, just honoring our club again by make, making your appearance and also making these new inductees uh, feel a part of, of everything. And by the way, I'd like to congratulate all award winners, all uh, athletic uh, indu uh, inductees into the special categories. Uh, we are so proud of you, and I hope your families are so proud of you. Uh, I just want you to have a great time tonight and enjoy this the rest of your life. We have uh, three inductees, former inductees, that are going to be honored elsewhere recent, in, in just recent uh, weeks. Uh, one is Carolyn Jackson. One is Turner Jackson. They are going to be inducted into the TWSAA Hall of Fame in April. And one, one has already been honored at Notre Dame High School, Mr. Stan Summerell, by having his number retired at, at uh, Notre Dame High School. Congratulations to you three. Okay, I will get out of the way and let the program begin, but I wanted you to know how happy I am to be here tonight to enjoy this program. Thank you very much. I'm Randy Smith. This is Daryl Patterson. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> your mom now. We've... Uh, we, what, we got about 90-something years, 100 years of experience here as a sports journalist. 90 and 10. N yeah. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we're both members of the Hall of Fame. We're on the board, and we're very happy to see you guys tonight. We're going to introduce the uh, inductees. Daryl, you go first. In the baseball category, welcome, please, Greg Dennis. Also in baseball, Mike Turner. In men's basketball, Terry Scott. In men's basketball, Daryl Yarbrough. In women's basketball, Gloria Scott Dethridge. Also in women's basketball, Coach Jim Foster.
Boat Racing, Ted Turner, represented by Ted Turner the Fourth. In the category of officials and administrators, Joe Scruggs. Also in officials and administrators, Mr. Earl Condra. In golf, Julie Garner. In football, Brent Johnson. Also in football, David Hanna. And also in football, the late David Douglas, represented by his parents, Max and Pat Douglas. In softball, Rick Allen. In sports media, James Beach. In the swimming and diving category, Wendy Oaks Wilhelm. In tennis, Jeff Clark. In the track and field category, Lee Pride. In volleyball. Judy Rominger Pruitt. And we've already introduced uh, one of the men's basketball inductees already on the stage. Toe, Daryl Yarbrough. The President's Award winner tonight, the late Bucky Walford, represented by Diane Walford. Our Catherine Neely, Female Athlete of the Year from the University of Kentucky, fresh off the court last night, Ryan Howard. Our Reggie White Male Athlete of the Year from the Tennessee Titans, Isaiah Mack. Our Morgan Morris Award winner from East Hamilton High School, Alan Karajic. The Betty Provasco Award winner for this evening is Linda Carter.
And our final award winner in the La Walt Lauter Award is Sam Woolwine. We have uh, Coach Frank Jones is going to give our invocation for this evening. Let me bow our heads, please. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we just come to you today, Lord, just give you thanks and praise for this day. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have this ceremony tonight, Lord, for all these honorees. We thank you for uh, the athletic abilities that you've given them for the care that you've given them over the years. We thank you for their family and their friends and all who have come out to show their love for each of our inductees. We thank you for the Chattanooga Hall of Fame board members, for all the work and dedication that they put into putting this banquet together. We ask that you continue to strengthen each and every one of them. And now, Lord, we thank you for uh, this food that's been prepared. We ask that you uh, bless this food, that it will nourish our bodies, and bless those that are serving the food. And these things that we ask, in Jesus' name, amen. Before we get to the introductions, little housekeeping because we've been asked this uh, repeatedly several, well, a lot by a lot of people. How do you get into the Hall of Fame? What are the requirements and that sort of thing? I'm going to throw out www.chathalloffame.org several times tonight. That's our website. Uh, there is uh, every person that's been inducted into the Hall of Fame is on that website. Uh, there's information on how to how to get tickets for this event. Everything you need to know about the Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame is on that website, as well as uh, the requirements. I just want to go over some of them. You, uh, with the exception of the individual award winners, all inductees must be 45 years old, native born and or spent a good number of years living, coaching, or playing in Hamilton County or one of the counties that border Hamilton County. It's Greater Chattanooga Area Hall of Fame. If you were all phys ed, or best on your block, or you won an arm wrestling match at a bar one night, <laughs> we congratulate you, but that doesn't really qualify you to get into this Hall of Fame. As you meet tonight's in, uh, 19 inductees and six special award winners, and hear about their accomplishments, you will most likely see exactly what I mean. If you know of someone that you would like to recommend to the board for consideration to be in the Hall of Fame, go to the website. There is a nomination form there. Fill it out. Send it back in to uh, one of the board members. Get in touch with a board member, and we will consider, absolutely consider that person and their credentials for being in the Hall of Fame. We start tonight in the baseball category. Our first inductee is Greg Dennis. Greg was the starting shortstop as a sophomore on Notre Dame High School's 1979 state championship team. He led the city in hits that season, one of his two all-city seasons at Notre Dame. At McLennan Community College out in Waco, Texas, Greg was the Highlanders' starting shortstop both years he was there helping both of those teams get to the JUCO World Series both seasons. They finished third in 1982, then won the national championship in 1983. Greg was first team JUCO All-American in 1983, setting school records for games played, hits, at-bats, and fewest strikeouts. After junior college, Greg went to Florida State he was the Seminoles' starting third baseman in 1984, helping the Knolls win the Metro Conference regular season and tournament championships. After a year at FSU, Greg transferred out to Baylor, 
moved back to shortstop and led the team to their best record in school history. He won the team's MVP award. He was unanimous, all Southwest Conference pick. And by the way, Greg did not make one single error that season. The Toronto Blue Jays made Greg the 37th overall pick of the 1985 draft. He played a year in the minor leagues in Sarasota, Florida, and Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada, and then decided to go into coaching, which he's done for 30 years, the last 14 at Chat State, where he's the winningest coach in school history. His Tigers have finished in the top three in their conference nine times. They've won two conference championships. They've been ranked nationally nine of the last 11 seasons, as high as number one back in 2007. His 2010 team went to the JUCO World Series. Five of his Chat State players have made All-American. Over 150 have gone on to play at four-year colleges. Over 60 have been academic all-conference players. This guy knows his baseball business. We welcome him to the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame, Greg Dennis. Our next baseball inductee is Coach Mike Turner. Mike was a multi-sport athlete at Charleston High School. He attended Tennessee Tech where he played college football. And after graduation, he returned home to teach and coach at his alma mater. It was Charleston from 1975 until the school closed in 2001. They closed it to make room for a brand spanking new Walker Valley High School. Overall, between the two schools, Mike coached baseball for 26 years and built a tremendous resume. Mike has an overall record of 698 wins and just 247 losses. He coached his teams to 20 district championships and 12 regional titles. He took nine different teams to the state tournament. And two of those teams finished second. He was named District Coach of the Year an amazing 20 times, Regional Coach of the Year eight times, and he became the athletic director at Walker Valley in 2006, and he still holds that position today. In 2007, Mike was inducted into the Tennessee Baseball Coaches Hall of Fame. Now the Greater Chattanooga Area Sports Hall of Fame welcomes Mike Turner as a 2020 inductee. Our next inductee is in the men's basketball category, and that would be Terry Scott. Terry is a member of what you could call Bradley County's first family of basketball. More on that in just a few minutes. He was a pre-integration student at College Hill for 10 years, and then in 1964, he became the first African-American athlete to enroll at Bradley Central High School, where he lettered in basketball, baseball, and track. In a graduating class of 450, Terry was ranked 23rd academically. Terry earned a basketball scholarship to Middle Tennessee State University where he was a starter for three years. Freshmen were not allowed to play back then. Terry was the Blue Raiders' most valuable player in 1969 and 70. That Kentucky ABA team drafted Terry, but he decided just to stay at Middle Tennessee State, retain his amateur status, and run cross country and track. Well, he set a school record in the triple jump and ran on the record-setting one-mile relay team. After graduating in 1971, Terry took a teaching and coaching job at Oral Roberts University out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where he helped start the women's basketball program. Terry moved into high school coaching in Tulsa in 1982. In 1986, 
He became the first African-American boys head coach at Tulsa Central in their school history. He won three state championships there, then moved to Muskogee High School as dean, assistant principal, and boys head basketball coach, won two state tournaments in three years there, finally retired in 2012. Terry still lives in Tulsa. He's, he and his siblings are very involved in Bradley County with LETS, L-E-T-S, that's Life Education Through Sports. It's an annual four-day basketball camp for youngsters teaching basketball skills and life advice as well. He's in the Oklahoma Basketball Coaches Hall of Fame, the Tulsa Public Schools Athletics Hall of Fame, the Holiday Tournament of Champions Hall of Fame, and the Bradley County High School Hall of Fame. We welcome him tonight to the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame, Terry Scott. Our next men's basketball inductee is Daryl Yarbrough. Daryl Yarbrough joined several of his teammates from UTC's 1977 National Championship squad as an inductee in the Greater Chattanooga Area Sports Hall of Fame. Daryl has been a police officer, he's been a car salesman, and he's been a high school basketball coach for a long time. That's since he left UTC. But his career as a player with the mocks is why he's here. He was part of that famous Louisville connection. Remember guys like Wayne Golden and William Gordon? Came, came from Louisville. He joined Coach Ron Shumate's team in Chattanooga, and of course he was an all-state player at Louisville Central High School. He played his high school basketball and even played in the prestigious Kentucky-Indiana All-Star Game. He was a good student at Louisville Central. That's where he served as a class superlative, and he was also a member of the student council. He was a four-year letterman at UTC. He was named the team's most improved player in 1976, the best defensive player in 1977, and the most valuable player in 1978. He was a key contributor to the Mox national runner-up team in 1976 and, of course, the championship squad in 1977. The thing I remember most about Daryl Yarbrough was his shot. So smooth and on target. He could shoot the rock, no question. Please welcome our next basketball inductee to the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame, Daryl Yarbrough. could play and every time I hope you're all watching the videos of the of the people as we induct them every time I see that national championship video I get chill bumps I do that was a an historic night we have added a new category for this year actually we have split the basketball category uh, into a men and a women's category because we have so many nominees in both divisions that we just separated Actually, our first two women's basketball inductees are no-brainer. The first is a member of that Bradley County first family of basketball that I mentioned earlier, Terry Scott, Alvin Scott, Levi, their sister Gloria Scott Dethridge goes in tonight, a 1971 graduate of Bradley Central High School where she played for the late coach Jim Smitty. Gloria was the first African-American Bradley Barrett. She was on numerous 
all district, all region, all sub-state, all state teams. She was on that 31-1 and 1 1970 state championship team at Bradley. Glory wore, uh, Gloria wore jersey number 13 at Bradley. That jersey is now retired, hangs from the rafters in the gym alongside her brother Alvin's number three jersey. After high school, Gloria played for the Tennessee Lady Vols. You may have heard of them pre-Pat Summit, pre-NCAA women's basketball. It was AIAW back then. She finished her career as a junior in 1974. She was Coach Margaret Hudson's on her final team before Coach Hudson turned things over to that Summit lady. That 1974 team finished 25-2. and two. That second loss was in the AIAW region finals. During her career at Tennessee, Gloria had the opportunity to play against the Russians as a member of the Eastern Region USA All-Star Team. Gloria got her BS degree in business administration from UT. She retired in 2005 from TVA to Knoxville where she was a business analyst. She was on the Knox County Board of Education for eight years, now works in real estate while continuing to serve on several community boards and organizations like the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame, where she serves as secretary of the board of directors. A little while ago, I told you about the Scott family's annual Let's Play Basketball Camp at Bradley Central, where she is a member of the Hall of Fame, and now she's a member of this Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame, joining her brothers Terry and Alvin. I give you Gloria Scott Deathridge. Our next inductee for women's basketball is certainly no stranger to our city, Coach Jim Foster. His last coaching job was here in Chattanooga as he coached the Lady Mocs for five seasons before he retired in 2018. Foster was also a head coach at St. Joe's, Vanderbilt, and Ohio State. That's where he was named the Big Ten Coach of the Year four times. His overall record, 903 wins, 347 losses. Now, that's a winning percentage of 72%. That's pretty doggone good. His record at UTC was 120 wins, only 40 losses, and he took four of his five teams to the NCAA tournament, winning four Southern Conference championships. In addition to his excellent record of coaching collegiate basketball, Coach Foster also spent a lot of time as an assistant coach and a head coach for Team USA Basketball. <clears throat> Pardon me. From 2013 through 2016, he was the chair of the Women's Junior National Team Committee. And in 1987, he was an assistant coach on the gold medal winning team in the Olympic Festival. Overall, Coach Foster was a coaching staff member of five gold medal teams and one bronze medal squad with an overall record of 27 and four. He was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame in 2000, uh, 2013. And if there was a Hall of Fame for wine connoisseurs, he'd be in that too. <laughs> Tonight, we welcome Coach Jim Foster to our Hall of Fame. Coach Foster, was it last year you were here, Jim, or year before? Last year he was our, our uh, President's Award winner a year ago. So we need, to, we need to get Coach Foster back year after year after year. We're going to put you on the board. Pardon? We'll put you on the board. How's that? <laughs> Two years ago, we uh, honored Ted Turner with a special 
one-of-a-kind recognition. Tonight, Captain Outrageous goes into the Hall of Fame in the boarding, uh, boating category. Why Ted Turner and what's his connection to Chattanooga? Well, for those of you who might not know, Turner spent a few years at Macaulay School back in the day. He graduated in 1956. Turner, of course, revolutionized television by creating cable news giants CNN and TBS, won a World Series as the owner of the Atlanta Braves, created the Goodwill Games. He's the founder and the chairman of the United Nations Foundation, former Times Magazine Man of the Year. He's returned to his old stomping grounds numerous times since. He's given a million dollars to the private school over the years and several of his kids, grandkids, and so on have gone to Macaulay. One of those visits, 2011, Ted visited his alma mater, met with members of the newly reformed sailing club and a debate club. Spent an hour and a half with him in a question and answer session with the upper school students. If you look up Renaissance man in the dictionary, you probably will find Ted Turner's picture. Uh, truly, he was and is a person with many talents, many areas of knowledge on land and in the water. He did much of his early sailing out at the Privateer Yacht Club when he was a student at Macaulay. He was captain of the sailing team at Brown University. In both 1970 and 74, Turner won the Martini and Rossi Yachtsman of the Year Award. That's the highest honor that anyone can bestow in racing. It's the equivalent of the Heisman Trophy in college football. The one race everyone remembers was in September of 1977 when he skippered courageous to a 4 nothing win over Australia in the America's Cup. If you don't remember it, Google it and watch the documentary. You'll see why Ted Turner is this year's boating category inductee into the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame. Ted's current battle with Louis body dementia keeps him from being with us tonight, so accepting for him is Ted Turner the fourth. Tonight we have three inductees into the football category. The first is David Douglas, who enters the Hall of Fame posthumously. He has been described as a volunteer from his first breath to his last. He was a native of Spring City, Tennessee, where he was a great player for Ray County. After graduating from high school, David enrolled at the University of Tennessee and walked on in 1981. He walked on as a, about a 200-pound lineman. He worked hard, very hard. By 1982, he had earned a scholarship and became a key contributor on the Volunteers' offensive line. He won the Volunteer Award at Tennessee because he walked on and earned that scholarship. David was on the great Tennessee team that whipped Miami 35-7 in the 1986 Sugar Bowl. After graduation from Tennessee, he was an eighth-round draft choice of the NFL Cincinnati Bengals. He played five years in the NFL with the Bengals and the New England Patriots, getting an opportunity to play in Super Bowl XXIII with the Bengals. A neck injury cut his professional career short, though, in 1991. <clears throat> David married Carla Horton who was a standout forward for the Lady Vols and Coach Pat Summit's first national championship team in 1987. Their son Aaron also played for Tennessee in 2009, but Aaron passed away tragically in 2011. David was first diagnosed with a cancerous brain tumor in 2013 and battled the disease valiantly until his death in February of 2016. In 2013, the University of Tennessee dedicated a locker in the Peyton Manning locker room to the Douglas family. The day it was dedicated, David said, one of the proudest things I have is that I have a degree from my home state, 
University of Tennessee. I'll be a Tennessee fan until I go to heaven someday. I'm accepting the honor tonight for David Douglas are his parents, Max and Pat Douglas. Our next inductee is also in the football category and is similar to Terry and Levi and Gloria Scott Detheridge, a part of a family affair, if you will. David Hanna is one of Herb and Geneva's four sons, Ron, now deceased, John, Charlie, and David. They lived in Canton, Georgia, where the kids were born, eventually moved to Albertville, Alabama. They sent the boys to school over at Baylor, where John and Charlie and David became outstanding athletes playing for legends Luke Worsham and Red Etter. David was the baby. He was all-state, all-southern as a Red Raiders offensive lineman, helped them win the 1973 state championship after they finished second in the state in 72. David was also a standout in other sports. He finished third in the state in wrestling, competed on the track team in shot put and discus. David was Baylor's Ted Nelson, best athlete award winner uh, his senior year. Papa Herb, who grew up in Limestone, played college football at Alabama. So did John, so did Charlie, and so did David. Herb played in the NFL, so did John, so did Charlie, and yes, David, who became a four-year letterman, helping the Tide win four SEC championships, two national titles. As a senior, David was All-SEC, honorable mention, All-America. Not bad for a guy who was plagued by knee injuries throughout his career there. It was because of those injuries that David chose not to follow his dad and two brothers into the NFL. But the lessons he learned on the football field have carried through to everything he's done since. As a chicken and cattle farmer, a businessman and a father, as a volunteer coach at Albertville High School and Briarwood Christian School. Like many of y'all, I grew up in a sports family, all boys, all good athletes except me. Our conversations around the dinner table could get really interesting. Sometimes they could get argumentative. I can only imagine how it was at the Hannah's dinner table. Then and now, John, the best time Charlie and David get together, my, the stories they can tell. David followed John and Charlie to Baylor, then to Alabama, and tonight he joins them both in the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame, David Hanna. I might just, uh, can I say something right now I mentioned in the bio? Chattanooga is some special city. John Hanna, the best offensive lineman ever to play NFL football. Went to Baylor, Chattanooga Connection. Best defensive player ever in the NFL, our own Reggie White from Chattanooga. That's something, John. Our next category is still football, and our next inductee is Brent Johnson. Brent had a great career at Red Bank High School before he signed a scholarship with UT Chattanooga back in 1982. With the Mocs, Brent started 44 games in a row at either tackle or center, and he helped UTC to win 26 games during his career. He was part of the Mocs Southern Conference Championship Squad that was back in 1984, and in his UTC career, the Mocs never finished lower than third place in the Southern Conference standings. 
He was a team captain as a senior and graduated from UTC in three and a half years, went on to earn a master's degree in business administration. <clears throat> After college, Brent played for teams in the Arena Football League, being named to the All Arena League team back in 1987. That same year, Brent signed with the Chicago Bears and played in three games for the Bears. He's currently an account executive at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, and he resides on Signal Mountain. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brent Johnson to the Greater Chattanooga Area Sports Hall of Fame. Our next inductee is in the golf category. It's Julie Garner. Julie grew up in Chattanooga, went to Bright School and to GPS before she headed off to college. The Garners lived out at Valleybrook Course in Hickson, so it was kind of natural that, that she pick up the uh, game of golf, and that was pretty fair choice. As an amateur, Julie won the 1984 Tennessee Women's Amateur Championship. She's represented Florida in several region team championships, winning the 2004 and 2006 Golf Week Orlando Amateur Championships, as well as the 2005 and 06 Florida Women's Mid-Amateur Championships. Julie originally went to Auburn, played on the women's golf team as a walk-on, transferred then to Alabama after her freshman year after Auburn dropped women's golf. While at Alabama as a scholarship athlete, Julie was a three-year letter winner and team co-captain. After graduating Bama with a degree in journalism, Julie found her way to Rollins College in Orlando, where in three tenures, she has built one of the most storied programs of women's golf in NCAA Division II history. She coached the Tars to a second in the nation ranking at the end of the 86-87 season. Then after working at the Walt Disney Company for several years, she returned to Rollins for a year and a half, led them to a second place ranking. She left again in 97 to manage Nike's women's golf product line, but started her third stint at Rollins in 2000. The Tars won four straight Division II national titles from 2003 to 06. That's a total of six national championships. They've been runners up five times. They finished in the top four 13 times in the last 18 seasons. Julie has won the Division II National Coach of the Year Award four times. In her spare time, Julie started the Refugee in Residence Program at Rollins. That group works to provide transitional housing, meals, English instruction, and other support services to refugee families. The first was a husband and his wife and their four-year-old son who fled Colombia's prolonged civil war in hopes of finding a safer life in the USA. Julie hopes that that kind of program will spread to other college campuses. In 2018, she was inducted into the Women's Golf Coaches Association Hall of Fame, and tonight we very proudly welcome Julie Garner into the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame. Our next category is the officials and administrators. And our first inductee tonight is Mr. Earl Condra. He's someone who's very special to me and my wife. Earl Condra graduated from Whitwell High School in 1946. His first job in education was a teacher at Hicks Chapel Elementary School in 1949. From 1951 through 53, he was in the US Army, stationed in Fort Knox, Kentucky. 
After being discharged, he became a teacher at Whitwell High School in 1954. He spent one year as principal at Whitwell Elementary School before taking over as principal at Whitwell High School in 1967. He held that job for 24 years until his retirement in 1991. Mr. Condra also spent a lot of time coaching. In the early part of his career, he coached Whitwell Junior High School for 10 years in football, putting together a record of 65 wins, only 13 losses, and three ties. He also coached basketball at Whitwell Junior High School for 12 years and coached an American Legion baseball team for eight years. If I took the time to go over all of the awards and all of the offices Earl Condra has held or received, we'd be here past midnight. Literally. So I prefer to talk about something a bit more personal. I've been a broadcaster now for uh, something like 50 years. I've also been a, I also spent some time as an educator. My first teaching position was in 1978 at Whitwell High School. I taught eighth grade English during the day and worked at Channel 12 during the night. I did that for an entire year and Mr. Condra was my principal. He taught me so much in his own low-key way, not just about teaching, but about dealing with young people and how to make sure they would be interested in what I was talking about each day. He's been a great supporter of athletics. The stadium at Whitwell is named for Earl Condra. And in 2018, when the Tigers won their first ever state championship, Earl was there in Cookville watching his beloved Tigers. Now, I've got a a message I want to read from my wife. She couldn't be here tonight. But Sheila says, please excuse my absence. I am not skipping off to the dairy bar like I might have done back in the day. My heart is celebrating with you tonight. 40 years as an educator working for nine different principals, eight superintendents in two districts and two states. The career I love and pursue every day I owe to your leadership and your example. Thank you for not suspending me when I was a challenging student or firing me when I was a young, stubborn teacher. Thank you for knowing so much more and teaching with every breath you take. You've been in my Hall of Fame since I realized how hard the job of coaching, teaching, and leading really is. Congratulations with much love and all my gratitude. That's Sheila. Would you please help me welcome one of the very finest men I've ever known, Mr. Earl Condra. Our next inductee is also in the officials and administrators category. That's Joe Scruggs. Joe went to Brainerd High School where he was all city basketball player in 1969. He went to junior college at Gulf Coast, played baseball, then transferred to UTC where he played on the Mox baseball team for three seasons. As a senior at Brainerd, Joe was Football coach Pete Potter's student aide, one of the jobs was to get the mail from Bill Turner, who was also a basketball official. Turned out to be a huge influence on Joe, who went to work at the post office and worked his way back onto the basketball court dressed in a striped shirt, just like the mailman, Bill Turner. Joe started refereeing intramural games with Leroy Fanning at UTC, then moved up to the junior high, the high school, and the collegiate levels, blowing his whistle in thousands of games. He's 68 years old now, still going strong with the same burning compassion for the game, despite arthritis and one knee operation. Joe says as long as he's effective in what he does, 
He wants to keep going to hopefully work in his fifth state tournament. Joe has a personal all-star team. It's made up of guys that he has played against or called games for. Quite a team. Riverside's Richard Fuquay and Anthony Roberts, you've heard of them. Baylor's Jimmy Braddock, Brainerd's Malcolm Mackey, City's Orlando Lightfoot, and Howard's Gerald Cunningham. Cooper Dyer and Walt Keen, Junior McClellan and Leon Rash have been Joe's closest advisors and maybe at times <laughs> his most vocal critics, but Keen, who supervises and assigns basketball officials in Southeast Tennessee, says, you never have to worry about where you send Joe. You know he's going to take care of his crew and call a good game. He was honored as East Tennessee's Official of the Year in 2003, and tonight it's my honor to welcome him into the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame, Joe Scruggs. Our next category is softball, and our inductee for softball this evening is Mr. Rick Allen. Rick was a multi-sport star at Rossville High School, and he went on to play college baseball at UTC. That was back when UTC actually had a baseball team. He was named the team's most valuable player during his senior season, and after graduating from UTC in 1976, Rick became a fast-pitch softball player. He was a member of the prestigious Dixie Majors Fast Pitch League, playing with Combustion and McKee Baking, among others. On weekends now, Rick played for some of the top teams in the country, from Atlanta, Montgomery, Alabama, and even Seattle, Washington. He was an All-American in Fast Pitch Softball twice. He was a Dixie Majors All-Star every year from 1972 to 1992, and he was also the Dixie Majors All-Star Game Most Valuable Player four times. At one stretch, he hit safely in 19 consecutive games, and he had a lifetime batting average of 468 and an on-base percentage of .605. In other words, he got on base 61% of the time. This is fast pitch softball, folks. It's not slow pitch. It was fast pitch. Rick Allen got on base a lot. And like Barry Bonds, he was walked a lot as pitchers chose to pitch around him with runners on base. He also participated in the Olympic Softball Festival in 1991. Rick is quick to acknowledge his parents for being very supportive in his career, a son who exceeded all expectations, a wonderful wife and three beautiful grandchildren. Would you please welcome the newest inductee for softball in the Greater Chattanooga Area Sports Hall of Fame, the quiet assassin, Mr. Rick Allen. This year's inductee in the sports media category is James Beach. James went to Tyner High School, then up to the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Says he wasn't much of an athlete in school, so out at Tyner he worked as a football manager, basketball scorekeeper, and a baseball statistician. And that high school sports is really what mattered to him. Roy Exum hired James at the News Free Press in 1981. I'd love to know, wouldn't even begin to guess, how many miles James has logged on the highways and in the air covering local, regional, and national athletic events like state championships, SEC championships, bowl games, Final Fours, even the Masters. James won numerous awards from the Tennessee Sports Writers Association, including Best Event Writer, Best Feature Writer, and Best Prep Writer. 
Was that you in a football stance? Wow, I'm impressed. His coverage was instrumental in luring the volleyball state tournament to our city, as well as getting spring fling to start here and stay here from 94 to 2002. James was and still is an excellent writer. I'd like to share a few lines that he wrote on Chattanooga.com a couple of weeks ago in reflecting on tonight's Hall of Fame selection. James said, I played golf with Chi Chi Rodriguez, walked a butler cabin with Jack Nicholas, wrestled with Bo Jackson on a baseball field, caught a pass from John Elway, spent a night flip, uh, sipping a few cold ones and talking baseball with Joe DiMaggio. He said, I've run through the tee with Coach Johnny Majors, drove Michael Jordan around town when he was here for a sporting event, drove Lindsey Nelson from Knoxville to see his daughter at Orange Grove, and man, those stories from that voice were legendary, to say the least. James left the newspaper in 2000 to get into public relations and marketing work, but he continued to provide prep coverage for the Times Free Press from 2010 to 17, softball games for Chattanooga.com while working in the uh, state system as a water treatment operator for Eastside Utility District. Ladies and gentlemen, he's even been a lobbyist. A lobbyist when he was the marketing director for the Car uh, Carpet and Rug Institute. But in spite of that, he can add Hall of Famer to his resume. You deserve it, my friend. James Beach. Next up is swimming and diving. Our inductee for swimming and diving is Wendy Oaks Wilhelm. Wendy attended both GPS and Baylor in her high school years. At Baylor, Wendy was the first individual state champion in any sport. She was also the first All-American at Baylor, as well as the first female to qualify for the USA Swimming National Championships. She was a state champion four straight years while swimming for Baylor. And she also set new school and state records in 1989 and in 1990. Baylor won the team's state title in 1990, and as a sophomore, Wendy won individual state titles in two different swimming categories. In addition, Wendy was an academic All-American each and every year. Wendy went on to be a swimmer at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. She's now a successful orthodontist in Nashville, and she, along with folks like ESPN's Kirk Herbstreet, recently were named as one of Nashville's most beautiful people. In swimming and diving, our 2020 inductee, Wendy Oaks Wilhelm. This year's inductee in the tennis category is Jeff Clark. Jeff played uh, at Macaulay. He was the senior and team captain for the number one singles player on the 1991 state championship team. He won the singles and doubles championship in the 1990 Chattanooga Rotary Tournament and the 1991 state closed boys 18 singles championship. Jeff is a 1995 graduate of Vanderbilt. He led the doors to their first ever NCAA regional as a team captain his senior year. After college, Jeff completed, uh, competed professionally in the ITF satellite and tournaments in Europe and in Germany. Jeff was a single and a doubles finalist at the Irish National Indoor Tournament in 1996. That same year, he won the Chattanooga City Closed Doubles Championship, teaming up with Stuart Lawwell, won the singles title in 1999, in 2000, and in 2002. 
Jeff became an assistant to Jim Thompson at UTC in 1997. That partnership led the Mox men's team to the Southern Conference title and the women's team to a second place finish. He became the head coach in 1999, taking the Mox to the conference tournament finals and then to the tournament championship and their only NCAA Division I team tournament berth in 2000. The women's team reached the SOCON tournament finals. Jeff earned his master's degree in his first stand at UTC. Then he went to Ole Miss as his assistant coach from 2000 to 2006, helped the Rebels win back-to-back -back SEC titles, four straight top 10 nationally ranked teams, one Final Four team. Jeff returned to UTC as head coach of the women's team in 2008. His 2013 team got its first ever intercollegiate tennis association division one national ranking. Jeff went back to his alma mater in 2016. His 2019 Macaulay team won the Chattanooga Rotary Tournament, the Buckhead Rotary Tournament, the MBA Carter Invitational, the Tennessee State Championship, finished fifth in the top flight of the Deco Turf National High School Tournament. Board member Wes Cash, who knows a thing or 12 about tennis, says this guy should be in the Hall of Fame. Well, now he is. Jeff Clark. Our next category is track and field. And our track and field inductee for this year is Mr. Lee Pride. Lee attended the Macaulay School in Chattanooga from 1978 through 1991. Uh, 1981, I'm sorry. He stood out in several sports at Macaulay, including lettering and soccer, football, and of course, track and field. He was selected as the most valuable player on the track team in 1980, and again, he was elected MVP in 1981. He was the state decathlon champ in 1980, and he set several school records while he was at Macaulay. Lee attended the University of the South at Suwannee, where he lettered in football and track. He was a winner of the Baron Cravens Cup signifying the outstanding male athlete at the school. He attended the University of Alabama for his graduate work and became a professor of radiology and neurosurgery at Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. He started there in 1999 and he's still employed there to this day. He recently completed his first marathon in Berlin, Germany in, 19, uh, in 2017 at the age of 54. Our track and field inductee, Dr. Lee Pride. Tonight's final inductee is in the volleyball category, Judy Rominger Pruitt. Judy went to Bradley Central High School, graduated in 1987, then to King College and of the Tusculum University to get her master's. At Bradley, she was district MVP, all region, all state, and her team was a state tournament runner-up. Judy began her coaching career at Chattanooga Christian. She guided the Chargers to two state tournaments in her two years there. She won the Scrappy Moore Award, was the quarterback club's volleyball coach of the year in 1992. She returned to her alma mater in 93. Her Barretts won back-to-back -back Class 3A state championships in 93 and 94. She was coach of the year both seasons. Judy took a break from coaching for seven years, gave birth to daughter's Taylor and Madison, who became standout players in their own rights, thanks to good genes and to mama's coaching. In 2006, when Taylor was beginning her middle school career, Judy returned to the court as the head volleyball coach at Walker Valley. 
and coached there until 2017, during which she uh, reached the very impressive 500 coaching wins plateau. In her 11-year career at Walker Valley, her teams were district runners-up three times, and she got to coach Taylor and Madison, too. Judy ended her coaching career in 2017 with a record of 521 wins, 273 losses. She still teaches math at Walker Valley. Judy says that going into this Hall of Fame is truly an honor, mostly because she's following in the footsteps of her former high school coach, Connie Young. Judy, you don't see yourself as a volleyball legend, but one day someone you coached might join you and Connie in this Hall of Fame. You're seeing as how last fall four coaches in the Region 638 tournament were your former players. It's an honor to welcome Judy Rominger Pruitt into the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame. Well, that brings us to our special awards. And our first uh, special award we have to give this evening is the Betty Probasco Award. And it goes to Linda Carter. The Betty Probasco Award is for outstanding sports-related achievement and service. And the 2020 honoree, of course, as I mentioned, is Linda Carter. Linda coached basketball for 26 years at Red Bank Middle School, where she still teaches physical education. She won the HCAC regular season or tournament title half the time in her 26 years. She had an overall record of 338 wins and just 127 losses. She was the coach of the year 13 times in basketball. That's out of 26 seasons now. She won five HCAC titles and put together a record of 116 and 53 in softball. She's also an accomplished golfer. Don't try to play her. She'll beat you. As a student athlete, Linda played basketball at Motlow State and at Middle Tennessee State University. She exemplifies the standards set by the person this award is named for, and that's the great Betty Probasco. Would you please welcome our new, our uh, Betty Probasco Award winner, Ms. Linda Carter. That Betty Probasco and this Walt Lauder Lifetime Achievement Award honor goes to those two legendary, are, are named for those two legendary leaders in our community. They're given to a male and a female who have given loyal service or significant contributions to athletic or recreational programs in the Chattanooga area. I think you'll agree that Linda Carter fits that description for the Betty Probasco Award and so does our Walt Lauder Award winner, Sam Woolwine. Sam was raised in a community that was engrossed in Little League baseball and in football. So his journalism career started as a radio baseball analyst. That was in Huntington, West Virginia, of all places, home of Marshall University, where Sam went to college as a journalism major. His first story was a front page weather story for the Huntington newspaper. A four year stint at the Air Force interrupted Sam's college career, but he kept up those journalistic skills, writing briefs as an intelligence specialist in places like Italy, Turkey, Libya, and Myrtle Beach. In 1968, Sam headed to Chattanooga and even though he grew up playing baseball and football and admittedly didn't know a birdie from a bogey or a driver from a putter, Roy McDonald hired him over at the Free Press, gave him the golf beat. Eddie Davidson, the golf writer for the Crosstown Rival Times, 
and Betty Provasco, who was a pretty good golfer in her own right, helped Sam get his feet wet in that particular sport. By 1992, Sam had become the sports editor, and by 99, the executive sports editor, a position he held until he retired in 2003. Sam retired to become the executive director of the Chattanooga Classic Nationwide Tour Golf event. Stayed in that, that capacity till 2009. Sam was one of the original organizers and later the executive director of the Pat Boone Bethel Celebrity Golf Tournament. He also directed the Reggie White and Friends Youth Football Clinic. In 1996, he was in charge of the NCAA Men's national golf tournament at the honors course. Sam is one of only four people ever selected as honorary members of the Tennessee PGA. He's past president of the Tennessee Sports Writers Association. He has written articles for Sports Illustrated, Golf Digest, and Golf World. Not bad for that young whippersnapper who didn't know the difference between a bogey and a bogey, a bogey when he started out. Our winner of this year's Walt Lauder Lifetime Achievement Award, a board member and a great friend of the Greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame and Fellowship of Christian Athletes Everywhere, Sam Woolwine. Next is our Morgan Morris Award for persons who have overcome great obstacles to succeed in sports. And this year's award goes to East Hamilton High School kicker, Alan Karajic. Alan played a lot of soccer in his native Bosnia, but he had never played football until his senior year of high school at East Hamilton. He was encouraged to give football a try, and he immediately fell in love with the game. The first time Allen ever kicked a football was just one year ago. Now, you gotta, you got to think of something here. One year ago, he probably didn't even know if a football was stuffed or inflated. But he started kicking, and he loved it. He started to attend kicking camps this past summer where his field goal range eventually reached 60 yards and his kickoff range 70 to 75 yards. Every camp he attended, he was one of the very best kickers in camp. He started working with former University of Tennessee kicker James Wilhoit, who has written some very impressive things about Allen on social media. He stated that colleges really need to take notice of this young man. And they began to take notice. Jacksonville State was among the very first, and Allen recently signed a scholarship to continue his career with the Gamecocks at Jacksonville State. For the Hurricanes, he booted field goals of 45 and 49 yards. He hit six of 10 altogether. He also averaged 37 yards per punt for East Hamilton. It's kind of like the old Jerry Clower story that says the very first football game I ever saw I played in it. Please welcome the Morgan Morris Award winner, Alan Carrington. Next, we will honor our male and female athletes of the year. The female athlete of the year appropriately named after our current board president, the legendary Catherine Neely. This year's winner, soon to be legendary, Ryan Howard. A year ago, this young lady was turning the women's college basketball world on its ear. Not really a surprise, seeing as how just a few months earlier she had finished up a sensational high school career at Bradley Central, winning Tennessee's Miss Basketball Award and being named the state's Gatorade Player of the Year. 
Ryan was listed as one of the hottest recruits in the nation. She decided on Kentucky, breaking the hearts of everyone that wore any shade of big orange. So, what's she done in the last 12 months to earn this year award? Well, how about winning an SEC Freshman of the Week honor, a school and conference record eight times, averaging a team best 16 points and seven rebounds a game. The only second freshman in Kentucky history to do that. She won the SEC Coaches Freshman of the Year Award. She was on the Coaches All-SEC First Team. Associated Press named her the SEC Newcomer of the Year. She was ESPN's Women's National Freshman of the Year the Women's Basketball Coaches Association National Freshman of the Year, the U.S. Basketball Women's Association National Freshman of the Year, and the WBCA Honorable Mention All-American. Ryan was a gold medal winner in the USA Women's Under-19 World Cup Tournament, scored 10 points, grabbed seven rebounds, and had three assists, two steals, and two blocked shots in the national championship game. Now, how does she follow that up? Well, right now she is the SEC's leading scorer, 23 points a game, that's second best in the nation, last time I looked. Ryan is the front runner to follow up that SEC Freshman of the Year Award with the Player of the Year Award and might turn that National Freshman of the Year Award into the National Player of the Year Award. Ryan fractured a finger on her left hand in a win over Auburn back on January 27th, had to miss four games. She's back in the lineup now. In fact, yesterday, she was on the Kentucky team that played top-ranked South Carolina in Columbia, and she is with us tonight. Our Catherine Neely, Female Athlete of the Year, Ryan Howard. All right, Reggie White, everybody knows that name. A couple of years ago, we decided to name our Male Athlete of the Year Award for Reggie White, and I can't think of anybody that deserves that more. This year, it goes to another football standout, Isaiah Mack. Isaiah attended Northwest Whitfield High School. He was a two-time All-State defensive lineman and a two-time Regional Defensive Player of the Year for the Bruins. From Northwest Whitfield, Isaiah signed the scholarship to play at UTC for the Mocs, and he made an immediate impact. At UTC, Isaiah recorded a career total of 222 tackles. They included 41 tackles for loss, which is fourth all-time at UTC, his senior season at UTC was certainly one for the ages. He recorded 78 tackles in 11 games, claimed eight and a half sacks, and 11 tackles for loss. He was named the Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Year, as well as being named a first-team All-American. He signed with the Tennessee Titans as a free agent, but he made the team. And as a rookie, he appeared in three games with the Titans. He is currently listed as the second team defensive tackle for the playoff team, the Tennessee Titans. It's fitting for the winner of this award to be a great defensive lineman, just as the name Reggie White. Reggie was the greatest defensive lineman in the history of the game of football. And Isaiah Mack is following right behind in Reggie's footsteps. Please welcome the Reggie White Male Athlete of the Year, Isaiah Mack.
little story on Isaiah when he was uh, elected for this award or chosen for this award. I got in touch with Mike Keith, longtime friend and voice of the Tennessee Titans, and asked Mike to help me get word to Isaiah that he had won this award. So we went round and round about how we were going to do this. So Mike says, why don't we do it on the call-in show one night live? So we did that. Mike goes to the phone. Isaiah is his guest on the show that night. And it's like they went to take a phone call. We've got Daryl from Chattanooga on the line. So Daryl from Chattanooga did his, you know, long-time caller, first-time listener kind of thing and stunned Isaiah. He was, the boy was speechless, <laughs> but it went great. And Isaiah, thank you for that. Thank you for that, and congratulations. Finally tonight, the highest award that we give out, it's the President's Award, named for the folks who have headed up this Hall of Fame over the years, Fred Gregg, Rudy Simpson, John Farr, Mickey Haddock, and Catherine Neely. It's sort of a Lifetime Achievement Award on steroids, if you will. This year's honoree is the late Bucky Walford. Bucky grew up in poverty, really, in the coal mining town of Kimberly, Alabama, about 20 miles north of Birmingham. His mom and dad and the five kids lived in a four-room house. His dad worked in the coal mines. Bucky was determined he wasn't going to do that. Bucky was a good student. He was a good athlete, president of the National Honor Society, captain of the football team his senior year in high school. University of Chattanooga gave Bucky a football scholarship that turned out really well for both of them. As a freshman, Bucky had a 55-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown against Auburn, who afterwards tried to get him to transfer down there. He made a visit, but after talking to his daddy, he decided to honor his commitment to Chattanooga. Bucky played for the legendary Scrappy Moore and for Harold Wilkes, he was co-captain, Little All-American after the 1968 season. That's the highest honor in small college football. He returned to kickoff 94 yards for a touchdown against Ole Miss his senior year when the box went 9-1, and one, which is still the best record in school history. Bucky's 13 career interceptions still tied for the best in UTC or UC history. His career average of 5.2 yards a carry, still in the top 10 in the record books. Bucky's biggest impact on UC and later UTC came after his playing days. During his business career as a developer of shopping malls, Bucky always stayed close to his mocks. He dropped in on practice, he stayed in touch with former teammates, went to games when he was in town, always financially supported the school, which merged, of course, with the UT system during his senior year. The Mox weight room at the McKenzie Arena is officially called the Wolford Family Strength and uh, Conditioning Center. Bucky endowed a scholarship in his father's name. He was a member of the athletics board, the UT Board of Trustees. He was chairman of and lifetime trustee of the UC Foundation. He was selected the UTC 2017 Outstanding Service Award winner, and of course, he is in UTC's Hall of Fame. Bucky met and married Diane when they were both at UC, Diane and sons Clint and Chad, carrying on Bucky's legacy at their alma mater. After more than a year of planning, work is going to soon begin on the new Wolford Family Athletics Center. It's a 35,000 square foot addition to the renovation of McKenzie Arena. We've no doubt all heard the phrase, the good they die young. That was absolutely true of Bucky Wolford, who was only 70 when cancer took him from us two and a half years ago. Like many of you, I'm blessed and glad that I met him and was able to call him friend. Our greater Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame President's Award, the late James Bucky Wolford, accepting is his widow, Diane.
Well, if you had a good time tonight, let's give all the inductees and award winners another hand, please. That's it, folks. We'll see some of you next year. And uh, be careful driving out there. It's a really nasty night. And we really, really appreciate you coming to the 54th Chattanooga Sports Hall of Fame Band. Thank you.